The Guide to Spiritual Truth I have said thus much, simply to illustrate the position in which spiritualists stand. They are deserted by the leaders of religion and science, with a few noble exceptions, a few of those who dare to cast the priceless treasure of their soul and conscience in one scale, and their worldly popularity in the other, and the conscience weighs so heavy that the scale with popularity goes up out of sight altogether. With the exception of these, the spiritualists are deserted by those who should be their leaders and teachers both in science and religion, and what remains? To trust to your own fidelity, to your own sense of right, to the God who protects you under all circumstances and never leads you into temptation without offering you an open way for escape, to the Great Spirit who is your Father, to the power that proves itself by its fruits. Thus far you and I have proved those fruits, but I tell you now as we are closing we cannot pause there. The Spirit lives, our own destiny unfolded to us, our own hereafter is made clear and plain, the way is marshalled by those we love best and those we can trust. And now we would ask how far these beings, not as authoritative teachers, but as guides in the direction where we are to search out a higher responsibility even than that we have hitherto assumed, the responsibility of forming our religious belief, how far can we trust them? I shall here speak briefly of the creed which is evolved from spiritualism. I may not pause now on the methods of evolution. You have heard some of them in past discourses, you may apply those to the results which I now offer, 